And I got this uh, head all welded up finally. Took a lot of work to get that to finally weld, but finally got a clean weld. And I added a bunch of fins over here, so when I put the hole back in there, it'll be centered. It's way off sit on the other on the one side, so that should make it look a lot better now <clears throat> once I get it done. So anyway, I had to build that all up. So now I'm going to go ahead and surface this off right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back up in the jig over here and cut the spark plug all back out like I did on this one. So that's where we're at now. Okay, I'm getting ready to figure out my angle I'm going to cut this plug at because I wasn't happy with how it came out before. So I'm figuring out what I want to do. Basically, I'm squaring the head up. So we're coming off these two studs back down here sitting flat on the table. So that makes that means the head's going straight up and down. I look at my spark plug angle here, looking through, see what I like and don't like. I take my angle finder here and I lay it flat against the head gasket surface. And I eyeball my straight edge there. And that looks pretty much the same angle. Then you come over here and you read what the angle is. And it's 65 degrees, which is 25 minus 90 is 65. So you have to remember which way you're going on this stuff. So I got my angle plate over here set at 65 degrees now, which is down with your angle finder here. And there's our 65. So I got that part figured out. The next problem is I turn it the other way, this way. So now we're sitting flat on these studs over here, down here. It should be sitting there. I'm on the motor mount stud over there. So you have to be flat here. So I have to actually shim this up a little bit. To make it actually flat. And you make sure you're on those studs. And these two center studs, ones we're on, both of these have a gap on them. They're equal on both sides. And then we look down to center. Do it on the side here. And we look down to center of our our stud here and we look at where our combustion chamber angle is and we want our spark plug to go right down the center of the chamber here or most most likely slightly toward the exhaust right now Harley puts them slightly toward the intake when I do these heads here or the, this side spark plug I actually center them up I move them over about a hundred thou which slightly offsets into the exhaust or right on center and that also makes the head thicker right through here so it won't break as much now these heads are actually offset, <clears throat> so when you run your straight edge across these studs right here, so we're against these two studs, and you measure from here to the top of your valve guide, which is right here on the shoulder, which doesn't move. This side here, we're about 225. We do the same measurement on this side over here, coming like this. And we're actually in a high 200, about 280 or so. Now right now I'm on the I'm on the thread right here. You gotta get up on the shank of the stud. So you gotta be measuring against this here. And this over here. See if you're down here on the thread, you're wrong. You gotta be right up on this shoulder here. So you know, I can't measure like this one hand. I have to hold the scale up in the air. So that means that this. <clears throat> This bolt pattern is, off, is actually offset relative to the valves, which means your combustion chamber, by about 50 thou, which means it's half that is your offset, 25. So it's 25 over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, I'm going to center it up off the stud here, and then I'll offset it this way, either 25 or 50. 25 should center it, 50 should make it further, which means towards the exhaust, which would be the opposite where it is now. And if you eyeball this thing with a scale coming off of the stud right here and run it down like that, it pretty much goes down to center of the seats right here. Pretty close. You know, it's just slightly off center. So that's where our distance over there, between over here, comes in at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this head up in there, center it up off of these studs here so it sits flat. Before I was doing an angle in there and I was screwing everything all up. And I'll come off the center stud right here, which will give me equal distance on my pushrod cover, so that should fit better. 
because this one over here were too close here because of the way the angle is done. They actually had this thing cocked like this, so that puts this side closer to my push rod cover, which I didn't like, but that's, I just duplicated this head when I made the other head. So now I'm just going to do it how I want to do it easily, just figure this crap out myself and do how I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put this all up in the mill over here. <coughs> Excuse me. Get everything all centered up off the stud here, then I'll look at my offset and see what I want to do. So I'll have to do that off camera because I can't hold the camera and do all this work. But anyway, that's how we figure out where we want that spark plug. Because ideally, when we're all done, we want the spark plug to be down low and slightly toward the exhaust valve. That's where I want it to be. So right now, the one, the way we did the other head over here. Actually, that's not the one I did. That is, this is the one I did over here. This head here actually came over more toward the intake and a little bit higher than I wanted to be. So I like to lower it down a little bit and move it toward the exhaust. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So anyway, we'll see what happens here. All right, I got my head all jigged up on here. Now I got it pretty square now on the indicator here. So, side here, we're just over the 10 number there. So you can see it. This is, my, this is the second highest one here. It's almost 13. This is low. And this is the highest one, and then same as the other one. Right about 13. So that's got our head pretty level. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and put my cutter in here, bring it over. I'm going to leave this here about 700 tall initially, and I'll probably maybe slip it in a little bit more to 650 from here to here on my big cutter, and that'll dictate where my hole is going to go. And I'll put a little hole in it, and then I'll take it out of the jig and go see what I got. See how close I am. If I don't like it, we'll fix it. So I'll do that next. Okay, I got my cutter in here. I got it centered up. I centered off of the stud right here. I have not, I zeroed everything out. I have not moved it over yet. So we're going to go ahead and move it toward, I'm going to move it toward exhaust here. So we're going to move it about 25 for now. Right there. Close enough. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and Take a little trim cut so I can trim the surface back right here so I get my dimension from the top to bottom right here. And right over here on this head here, you can see it's around 7.30 or so right now. And his other head here, it could be cut as low as the 600s in this thing, 650 or so. But the spark plug isn't that deep. The spark plug is at this angle up here, which is probably in the 7 area, about 750. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one back to about 700. First I've got to make a trim cut, see where I'm at, then I can come back and hit it. So now we got to go ahead and do that part. Okay, depth stop there. Go ahead and feed it down here with a crank handle here. down until we start cutting something. Okay. And we're sitting on that thin right there. And you can see I'm just cutting right here too. Barely touch that surface right there. So we'll go ahead and move it in a little bit. It's probably about 50 thou right there. Take our initial cut, see what happens here. Okay, now we got 
got something to go by we can measure now. So it looks like we're just a little bit over 700 right now. Our stud's way up in there, so we can drop that by quite a bit. So we'll give it another, another good chunk. I got 75 this time. Change our numbers up here. 75. And let's go ahead and see what that one looks like. Feed with this ground panel right here. So be careful, don't take too big of a cut. Yeah, I mean, it had pretty hard cause issues. Okay. So that looks pretty good. I think we're getting, we're not hurting this at all, so I'll just keep cutting deeper. I think we're good for probably another 50 at this rate. So let's go to 120. I'll do like 120. Cutting the whole way down now. Right all the way down to there. So I'm starting to get a pretty good cut going. So it looks like we're up here around 635 or so. So I'm gonna give another 35. So that should put us around 55 or so. So we'll do a 50 pass. Here, there's 150. We'll go ahead and zero that back out. Oop, get where you can actually see what I'm doing. So I just went to 50 and zeroed it. I'm not watching the screen, I'm watching what I'm doing. this boss too much when you pull the stud off here. The more valve spring pressure you got and the higher the RPM the more you try to rip this thing off the bike. I have done that on my Sportster. So it looks like I'm about 580. I covered it more than I wanted to. So I'm going to leave it at that because I only want to go like to maybe 600. So we got this at zero right now. I'm going to go ahead and back this off about five and re-zero it. That's close enough. And we still got our negative 25 in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and plunge this down here. Actually, I'm going to look at this here a little bit. Uh, in neutral. Okay, so now I'm looking at my cutter location here, and I don't like the location I'm in because I got don't have clearance for my push rod cover here. And that was not part of my plan. So I don't like that at all. So that means a rethink. So now I'm going to move this thing back to zero. Close enough for now. Just knocking up. Come back down. We'll look at it again. We still got way little clearance on this side compared to this side. So, I'm not liking how this is turning out right now. Should be uh, 
Should have a lot more clearance here than what I got. So something is not how I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and do some more looking over here and some more hand laying stuff up and see if I can see where my air is at. Because right now I don't like where I'm at. If I'm going to run in this position like this, then I need to rotate this head down like this to get to move the cutter from here to here, but still be on center with this. And that should put the spark plug close to the exhaust where I want it to be. So I got to do some looking and figure this out. So for now, we're stopped right now. Okay, I found my problem. My layout wasn't very good before. So I got a more accurate layout right now. So right now I got these two studs here are laying on top of the blocks. And before I was coming off the tips of the studs, now I'm coming off the base of the studs back here. So it's a lot flatter. So they had to sit square now. Then I take my compass here and put it at 90 degrees. So that's this piece right here. So we got this set at 90 down there. So we come up here with my block and hold it square. And we put it between the center of my valves here, which is kind of where I want my plugs to be. So that's centered. Now we go up and look at it, and you can definitely see that this push rod cover here is going to be a lot closer than this side. So that means I'm going to have to go ahead and rotate my head like this a certain amount and then slide it back over and then that would be centered up and my spark plug would see be over here toward the exhaust where I want it to be anyway. So all I got to do right now is figure out what that angle is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shim this thing over here on this side and get a mock up at the angle I want and then I'll measure the angle. So try to find a better way of laying stuff out than just more of an eyeball method. So, but that's why we quit. When we start seeing problems, you stop and come back and see what you screwed up and figure it out. Right now we haven't really done any damage because I haven't really got into the hole here that matters yet. So we still got plenty of time to fix problems. Okay, I got the head mocked up some more here. So basically I stuck this big fat washer here which is probably about 150,000 thick, I'd imagine. I haven't measured it yet. We're still sitting on this stud here. And so we're on that. So we come over here. And I got my straight edge over here where I want to be. Slightly offset toward the exhaust. And then we got our socket up here. So if you look at it right here, that's where it would sit. And the spark plug hole would be over there someplace. And if you look up the gap between our push rod covers here, we're pretty equal distance across. Now where it was before, see they had it over here. And you can see the difference in angle between the two, between this edge going straight up and down where that one's at. So it's probably about a 10 degree change in angles where I'm putting it, where they had it. So quite a bit of a change. So. And that's why I wasn't too happy before. So this should correct our push rod clearance and issue here. And it should also correct for my spark plug location up under here. And to center this up, instead of centering up off the stud here, it looks like I'll come in here about where this third fin is and center between these two fins. So that'd be on this one here and this one over here. So that should give me a pretty good idea where to put the hole. So that's about all you can go by. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So basically we're going to be rotating this headwards down, which will rotate the head underneath my cutter where I kind of want it to be. So it's, I'm not going to go by that method, but that's just kind of roughly what's going to happen. So I'll get this thing over here where it belongs a lot better. So I'll go ahead and try that and see how that looks. See what happens. Okay, I got the head readjusted now. So basically I zeroed it out on the stud here, my indicator, so it's on 10 on the dial. And this is a 190 thou washer, so 3 sixteenths basically. So you got the indicator centered right over that stud right there. And you slip the washer in here, and it should go to 10. And you wobble it back and forth, and wherever the low spot is, that's the number you've got. 
So we're about nine. So we're one thou difference between this stud over here and that stud there. You know, studs aren't super accurate to come off of, but in this case, it's all I got to go by. So we'll go ahead and use that for now. And now I can come by and see where my dimensions are between here and get an idea where that's at. So I'll go ahead and center that up and then I'll see how things look. So we'll come back here in a couple minutes. All right, I'm centering up my head here. Trying to come off these fins is just not very accurate. Really nothing to go by. As usual, you can't go by anything that's casted. So what I did was I went up and down like this with my indicator. So we go up and down this way. And we turn it over here. We go down this way. And we get the number to be the same on both sides. And you rock it back and forth and the number will stabilize. So that centers me up of a reference point. And then from there I can go plus or minus either that way or this way here until it comes where I want it. Uh, to go from there, I had to go over here to my head and I eyeball it. We hold the scale straight in here and we hold it straight in here and I move the plug over a little bit like I want to. Then we eyeball it up here, holding this at 90 degrees by just looking at it like this. And roughly we got a 200 thou gap on that side. Then we come up from off this side. And we had roughly a 100 thou gap right there on this side. So that gives me a 100 thou of difference. Half of that is 50. So I went ahead and moved it, moved it 50. And we moved it toward the intake valve because we had to move it this way here, which is on our intake side. So that'll give me a reference point to try it again. And now all I gotta do is that gives me my X dimension right here. And then for our Y dimension, we'll come back and touch off right here again and zero that. And that'll give us our number there. And then we'll see what it looks like again. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cutter in there, get things moved over, see what they look like. Okay, I got the cutter in here. I cut away this corner so I'm dead center. So that should be the same height that we had. Which is uh what was it, 600 as I recall? So then we bring the cutter down, stick it right in here, and then we eyeball it. And it looks like we're relatively centered up this way to this way. It's a little bit tighter on the exhaust here than the intake, but we're close. So we'll go ahead and grab a couple of uh, push rod covers. These here actually are Evo, but give you a reference to what we're doing here. It's hard to do with one hand here, but you kind of lay these in here a little bit. You can see how they're relatively close. We're a little bit closer to the exhaust than the intake, so a little bit tighter. So we might give ourselves a little extra clearance on there by taking that 50 and turn it into a 60 or something like that. So it's pretty close. A lot closer than it was. So I think I'm going to go ahead and kick it over a little bit. So let's give it 65 right there. I just dug into the fin there a little bit. So go ahead and look at that. So it looks like we've got any extra clearance there by doing that. It's only a 15 thou move, so we're not going to gain tons of clearances, but I think we're still pretty good clearances here. I'm not sure what the push rods angles are because I don't have a rocker box up on there, so I guess I can go put a rocker box on there and fudge it and see what it looks like. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. So, yeah, we're getting pretty close. So. Let me go find the rocker box and do a quick mock-up of that, see if it helps me any. Alright, that was a good call putting the rocker box up on here. So I just shim it up a little bit to make it more flat. These covers are a bit too long, I don't feel like cutting them. So, these are the earlier style. Uh, 77 earlier style, no, no, excuse me, 79 earlier, no o-ring. So they sit flat. 
lithium light. There's a shoulder up here in the rocker box at the angle, so it tells you where the angle the push rod will be at. And you can actually hold this in there and, and find the center right there. And you can see the gap to your cutter right there. So roughly got about that much right there. And then this one over here we do about the same thing and you can see the gap on that one. So we're pretty much equal. And I put that back to 50 because 75 was not going to work. No, the light doesn't like that, does it? <clears throat> yeah, turn the light off and be able to see better. There we go. Kind of. Anyway, the uh, so going by the push rod ag physical angle with these tubes are at, we're able to tell that I had to put that back at 50 offset. So now we know exactly where we're at. And you can see there's a big gap of thin over here and not much on this side relative speaking. So as usual you can't go by castings. Alright, so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Flatten flatness out down in here a little bit and we'll get an initial idea where our hole is going to wind up because right now it's just all weld in there. So let me get this all cleaned up we'll come back. Alright, I'm going to finally start cutting some metal after a few hours of doing nothing. In about five hours now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this, see what happens. <laughs> quicker now and I got more material hitting on it. It's a little bit quicker now, see? stopping point right here. Clean 
this thing off, see what we got. Okay, it's starting to look halfway decent down there. Still got a ways to go through here. Still pretty low right there. So I got about another 100 and 150 more to go, I think, which is a turn and a half on the crank. So I'm going to go ahead and cut down some more because I can't really put a drill bit in there because there's nothing flat to hit against yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and give it some more. in there. pretty good. All right, let me clean off. Check it again. Okay, I got it all cleaned up there. Whoop. So, just clean all the way around. Don't see any, any porosity in there, so it looks like the weld was pretty good. Definitely better than it was. I got my uh, swapped out, put my chuck in here, got my center drill. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, put a center drill right in there, and then we'll drill in We'll drill this all the way through the head, uh, you know, like an eighth inch drill or something, three sixteenths drill, and see what it uh, looks like on the other side. And if it works good, if not, we'll have to make a change. So let me go ahead and punch this in there and see what we got. <laughs> center hole in there. So I'll go ahead and swap this out, put a small drill in, drill all the way through and see what we got. So I'll do that off camera. Okay, I got the hole put in there. I also put my uh, level up on here. Try to get a half-ass idea where the hell we're at. So, this is not a one-handed operation. Anyway, I had 12.8 degrees, I think was the number I had. So, Reset this up and look at it again. But anyway, for now, I got the hole in here. So I got to take this head off. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the plate here with a with a red line. Figure out what this angle is and hopefully I can repeat it and put it back where it came from. We'll see. And it looks like our level is coming around 12.4. It's varying a little bit. I lost my center there. So it's 12.4 to 12.5 on the downside. So we'll have to repeat that. We put this back and check it. Okay, I'm gonna pull it out now. <coughs> All right, we have the head off now. So looks like it uh, came out pretty nice. So there's our hole right there. There's our drill bit. So you can see the angle that's going through the head out here. Yeah. Or not. There's light on there. So it goes right through there. So it splits up our push rod covers nice and even. Could be just a little bit more toward the exhaust. And down here on this side here, you can see we're pretty even uh, between the seats right now. So same deal, it could go toward the exhaust. So I gave it that 50 thou offset. We could probably live with a 25 or 
something like that, maybe a 30. Looks like we almost bisected our hole almost on the money. So if we actually centered it off of that hole right there, if that hole was visible, <laughs> that'd probably be about perfect. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I was hoping to be a little bit lower than that, but it's not bad. At least this plug will be nice and even in there, so it won't have a big low spot. But, uh, overall, pretty good for a first time guessing that everything. So once you put one in there, you can always fine tune your angles and stuff a little bit. After you do it two or three times, you should be pretty close to what you're trying to get. So I'm pretty happy with this. <clears throat> so it's all just a matter of doing a good setup, good layup. And yeah, so when you do something wrong, go back, double check. Make your changes, come back. And that's how you figure this stuff out. Just got to play with it a little bit. And if you take your time, you're all right. Now, if, if we didn't like where this was right now, <clears throat> I can still take an end mill and run it through that hole that's already in there and recenter in a different location. But I'm happy where it is. So, and over on this side here, it looks pretty good too. So the original fin would still be uh, not cut through, which would be nice. And I could actually move this thing up probably another hundred thou, but I don't want to make it too thin right here. So I don't want to be broke to break this thing off of here. But I think we could probably cheat and go at least another 50 more. Cut this to 550 instead of 600. And so these are all things you figure out after you do it one a couple times. So, but for now I'm pretty happy where it is. And I can definitely live with it. So I got to set it all back up. I put a couple of trace lines, one right there, and then I put one along the edge here, which was this line here, which is going to be our best one to reference from. I also have the drill coming through up here, and I'll put that in my truck, and we'll be able to center it off of that also. Should be able to duplicate where the head is pretty darn close. And then I'll put my angle finder up on those studs. That's not a very accurate way because of the heavy angle everything's out. So, but for now, I'm pretty good with this. So. I'm going to go ahead and put this back up in the head, in the fixture here, and get ready to cut it some more. And probably call it a night for the night, though. It's getting late. So, finish this up tomorrow. So, overall, I'm pretty happy. Okay, I got my head re uh, jigged up here. Just checking my airs. I marked it with the red felt tip there. I put the set of drill up through the truck. Everything looked good, but there's a lot of flex in that. So, this is a big end mill cutter, a lot of flex in this. So you bring this thing down, you lock it in, and you can see how I can rotate it in here. I wound up moving it, uh, uh, we were at 57.2, we were at 50.4 or something. So I only had to move it over 7,000 to get exactly back where I had it. So between going off the marks and the level I had up there, I got it within 7,000 of, of side to side location, which is our twist like. The whole head would twist like this, and it's only seven thou out, which is almost nothing in angle. And you can see the mark is dragging a nice circle all the way around in there. So that's a good repeatability. So, all right, so now it's ready to have the uh, drill put in there for tapping it out, seeing what we got. I, I didn't forgot to measure how deep the uh, head was right in that spot, so we'll have to go ahead and just uh, punch it out to a bigger drill size, and we'll do back. Put in and out a couple more times till we get the depth where we want to be. Tap it out. So anyway, I'll leave that for later. So we're done for tonight. All right, we got the um, spark plug hole drill out here for the tap drill size, which is half inch. So you can see it's pretty far down in there. So you got a lot of material to cut off here yet on the top. So this has to be cut down here quite a bit. <clears throat> Going by this set over here. Looks like we're about 2.2 inches up to the edge there, which is I'm not using because it's a short reach plug. My three quarter plug here, <clears throat> up to the top surface there, we're somewhere around the 1.8 to 1.900 area. And it's not square cut here, so it's hard to measure. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut this down to the at least in that 1750 area. Right now we're quite a bit uh, above that. So it looks like, I guess the light don't want to be on. So there's your number right there. 
what is that, 550? Oh, man, I got light on, I can see something. I think about 550, so we got a couple hundred thou to go down. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this down a couple hundred thou with my uh, end mill here. And we'll come back and show you what we got. Alright, day whatever day this is, I already forgot. Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, what day we start on this? Last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know what day it was. <laughs> Last week. Uh, let's see, where did we leave off? Uh, let's see, I did some grinding. So now it looks like a head now. We got a spark plug in here. Looks good. Let's take a little thin work to do. <laughs> plug seems to be down in the hole a little bit too far. So maybe we need to bring that up a little bit and bury it down in the bottom down there. So how far down is that? We don't know. Take our handy dandy measuring device. Ooh, we're only 233 minus whatever our overlap is. So I'll call it 200. Okay, right, we're 200 down. Good eyes. Good eyes. Or a lucky guess. All right, we got to dig this thing up and cut it down. 200 more thou. Which is either just going to clean up the bad part of the thread or it's going to be put us right on top of it. Hopefully it cuts the bad part away so I don't have to weld the head back up. Because so, that is right where that porosity is down in there that we don't like. Where's that light at? Ooh. There we go. So that area right there is bad. We don't want that area. That needs to go bye-bye that area right there. So I think 200 will make that go bye-bye. All right. So we're going to dig this all up and have a go at it. Okay, look down the hole, you can see how we did a, a swipe test. And we got a nice even finish around the hole. You seen that? Mm -hmm. So the swipe test, it went like this and went like that. And it's even all the way around. We had to readjust it a little bit till we got to work, work evenly. So now we go ahead and cut it down 200 thou. Now that we repeated everything. So I should put it here. in the system, isn't it? Of course, when you shake it around, it probably doesn't look like it. The camera's going like this. Lay it on that. It shakes worse. <laughs> Two tens that we need. Two ten to two twenty. Cut all the threads out. <laughs> cut some of them out. <laughs> all right, look out. Back in it. We cut some of them out. All right, we got our uh, spark plug uh, back here. 
So now you can see where we're at here. So let's, I can see it. So you can see how it's just about flush. So it looks like I got it right on the money where I wanted it. Whoop, get where you can see it. So I'm going to take it back and back. I'm going to grind this area out right here. Smooth it up a little bit like I did on this one over here. So you can see it. So you round it off just like that so that the uh, gases can get in. Whoop. So the gas can come across here and not catch an edge when you're flowing through your porting. So I'll go ahead and uh, clean it up a little bit right there and I'll give you a shot here when I get done. Alright, I just, <clears throat> just finished up doing the uh, last of the cleanup on the spark plug hole here. So you can see now that it's all nice and funnel shaped all through here. So the air can flow around real nice. Uh, the spark plug is unshrouded depending on anywhere where you put it. Obviously indexing will vary between different plugs. So it's up to you wherever you want to have the tip up. So I try to make it where no matter where you put it, it's got good flow to it. So that's how you want it. Stick it up nice and high in the air so it'll get plenty of air to it and it'll run good. So and then also on this side here, obviously I do some more clean up on this side on the fins, but I moved the spark plug right up against the top of the hole here. Where on this first head here where I didn't pick the angle. Instead of being right up in here, it's actually down here, pretty far down this way. So it's, it's pretty good gaps about this high up. So when I pick my own angles, I put the plug exactly where I want it. Versus when you copy someone else's job and it's not quite in the same area. You can see how this is close to the intake valve. Mine's, mine's more closer to the exhaust or dead center. It's pretty much centered on this job. So later on I could probably fine tune my dimension a little bit, move a little bit more toward the exhaust, a little bit lower. So if it came down about you know, up to an eighth of an inch, it wouldn't be too bad. You can start getting a pretty round, pretty heavy undercut under here, but it might make it run a little bit better if you dropped it slightly, but that's debatable. It's in a pretty good spot. The biggest thing is the spark plug is getting all you can get out of here. It's still easy to get to. We're in between our push rod covers nice and cleanly here, so there's plenty of room on both covers to get it in and out with a full plug. And unlike this one over here where it's going to be, it's kind of close here on this side when you put the plug in it. The socket over in here. You can see how it's really close on this side, the gap here. So it's not quite centered over. So, so anyway, that's what happens when you copy someone versus where you make up your own stuff. So I showed you how to do that, so you guys can figure this out yourself too. And I'll give you some of the angles in the videos if you watch it. There's some video angles in there of what I used. So anyway, but you got to have your plates like this. A couple of, if you have two angle plates, one going vertical this way and this one this way, you get all these multiple angles and be pretty rigid and you can do stuff. Do a lot of universal application with a couple of angle plates. So, all right, so that's it for this for now. So I'll go ahead and uh, clean up this stuff over here. So I might put some video up and be doing that later, but for now, the spark plug part of the job is done. So. Now I gotta do some surfacing, bore this out for big bore, and get it ready to go on the rest of the motor. So still a lot of work to do on the heads, but most of the stuff is done now. Cutting things over. Yeah, shooting out direction. Okay. Shooting out direction, depending on what you're doing. Cutting the fans back there. some fins back in there again. It looks better without the light. You can see it better. So we got one more to do. No. He wanted me to cut that in there, but the thing Ooh. is, see this one didn't have one there either. So why should I put a fin in there that didn't have one to begin with? 
customer doesn't know what the hell he wants anyway. We'll let him figure that one out. Yeah. All right, so we got some fins back in there. Now I got to do some die grinding to clean up the mess, and just about done with that one. There you have a determination. Sturgis! <laughs> Still right through that switch housing. It's all right. Don't mind. Okay. I'm going to the next size. Yeah. So we'll start off with a smaller bit and then I like to it. the larger bit. Tell us more. Then you just cram the unibit in there. Yeah. Your favorite tool. Yeah, cramming bits. <laughs> <laughs>